Hi guys, it's Karen with Love Your Land. Uh, as promised, I'm going to make this balm of Gilead here um, to show you how to do it. Um, but to save time, I'm not going to go over every single thing that you're going to need. And um, I'm going to go through the steps pretty quickly. But I did type this all up. So it'll be in the comment section below. And I'm going to see if I can get onto Facebook too. So um, the first thing that you're going to need to do is collect cottonwood buds. And they come from cottonwood trees. If you don't have cottonwood trees where you live, then you're just watching this for like entertainment purposes. <laughs> um, but if you, especially if you live in Loveland, you know we have like nine bazillion cottonwood trees and there you find them mostly, um, most concentrated uh, along rivers and streams. So uh, if you go down to any point near the river and park and get out and start walking, it, you, go find a cottonwood tree. If you don't know what they look like, look them up online. Uh, find a cottonwood tree, look up, see if you see buds coming out. If it's, if the buds have come out, look down and that ground is gonna be like covered in these okay and this is what you want you want the ones that have fallen off the tree please don't pick them off the tree so you're going to go through and pick them off um, i'm going to bring this up to you and show you the difference between fresh cottonwood buds and kind of dried up ones that you might if you have the choice between a stash of these versus these you're going to want to use these so let me bring this up to you okay see the difference these here are kind of dried up and old these are real fresh so these are the ones, these are the jackpot. If you can find a, a stash of those, that's what you're gonna want. And they come off really easy. And you can tell they're fresh because they're green inside, okay? Easy, you, whoopsie. You literally just go foraging for them. I did it two days in a row and I still, this morning, I went out and got these to show you guys. <laughs> and I was like, no, stop picking cottonwood buds. You don't need any more, Karen. So what I did is I came home and I, I had a big box of them and I just, sat there at the table and picked the buds off and put them in this container. You're also going to want to pick the cleanest buds that you can find. Since these cottonwood trees grow near rivers, uh, I was finding lots that were like shoved into the mud at the riverbank. I didn't, I just kind of went for the other ones, the ones that were just sort of innocently, innocently laying on grass because you can't, uh, you can, you can do whatever you want, but you're not supposed to wash these off. You don't, any, you don't want to do anything that's going to add water to your salve mixture. So um, pick clean ones, okay? So what I did is I, I picked them all off, I have my stash. Then last night in that crock pot, I put, this by the way is gonna say two cups and two cups. I'm making one because I, I, wanted, I wanted to use olive oil and I, it's really expensive so I'm only doing a half a thing, half a batch. Um, but you put your two cups of buds in your crock pot and then take about two cups of your choice of carrier oil it could be something like coconut or olive oil if you're going to use coconut oil or any solid oil you need to melt that down first on a low heat so once you get the buds in there you pour the coconut oil over it and you want to make sure there's a good inch inch and a half covering it so and then you can let this guy I can just walk over your can i can do whatever i want then you're going to want to let these guys sit in the crock pot on low for at least the thing that I read said at least a couple of hours, but four, yeah, there's four of us doing it this weekend. Um, Candace, Linda, um, Renee, and me. And we all did it a little differently, but Candace is like the expert of all things salve and soaps. And uh, she was gonna let hers go for 24 to 48 hours. So my first batch, that one you're seeing there, that was coconut oil that I used. And it went for like 36 hours, I think. This is only about eight hours, this batch. Um, about half an hour ago, I took this pot out of here. I turned it off and took this out because I wanted this to cool down so I can actually handle it. So now we're actually going to move on to the next step. So once you, once you've heat, um, infused your buds into your oil as much as you choose to, again, it's, I, I think it seems like it's just kind of your preference, but I really wanted to get the most of the, of the oils out of the buds as I could so I just let them steep for longer okay so now this is cool enough for me to actually pick up which is a beautiful thing because it'll make this go a lot faster and now I'm going to strain these buds out into this bowl using this metal sieve okay set this guy aside for now we are going to use that again in fact I'm going to turn this back on and then whoa do not slosh your <laughs> oil. Take a, uh, this isn't what I wanted, but okay. Who set these props up? <laughs> and you'll see down 
at the bottom of your bowl that there's like dirt <laughs> and stuff, it's okay, don't worry. Take another bowl, a nice clean bowl. Take a, uh, what is this called? Cheesecloth, that's right. So um, <laughs> I just felt like romper room there. And I see Bobby. All right, so take your cheesecloth. What I did last, uh, the other night, whenever I did this, was I kind of tucked it under to keep it from just collapsing in there. So just put, uh, this is double layered by the way. So put your clean double layered cheesecloth cheese cloth on your bowl. And I could just pour this in, but to kind of get it going, I ladled some on the top. And I wasn't really sure how this was gonna work because I haven't, I haven't strained an oil through cheesecloth ever. It goes right through. It's really cool actually. So now I'm just gonna go ahead since that kind of got the ball rolling. I'm just gonna slowly pour a little at a time until I've gotten this all through here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna um, take a paper towel here and wipe out this crock pot to get out any leftover seed bits or dirt. Just kind of clean it out a little bit. Okay, once you've gotten it strained through the cheesecloth, I go ahead and pour it into a measuring cup so I have some idea of how much I have to actually work with because you're gonna be adding some other things. So this is about a cup and a half of liquid, what will be the salve. The, um, it was olive oil and the buds, the oils from the buds. Okay, so I have about a cup and a half. So first thing that you're gonna to wanna to add to this, and I, I'm gonna put it back on the, on the crock pot in just a second, I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, the first thing you're going to want to add to this is vitamin E oil. It acts as a preservative, plus it's vitamin E oil, so it's just more, you know, benefits for your skin. Um, and if you don't add vitamin E oil, this would last about six months before spoiling. If you add vitamin E oil to it, it lasts for 12 months, roughly. So, and it's the general rule of thumb, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can put in like too much, is fine, um, is about... A teaspoon per cup so I'm just gonna go ahead and whoops whoops kind of put in like two teaspoons and there goes that the other thing I'm going to do is start adding the beeswax you have to add beeswax to this to actually make it firm up into a salve um, as far as how much to add it's everything you read will tell you something different <laughs> But what I most commonly read is a one to four ratio. So, um, but in the winter, I think I would want a softer salve because it's colder and it, the air even in the house is cooler. Um, and so it's gonna stay firmer on its own. In the summer, I'm gonna want more beeswax, especially if I'm using something like coconut oil. That's not coconut oil. If I'm using coconut oil, which is what is in here, that is a solid oil. So I'm not gonna be adding as much to batches that I use in the summer. Um, so I, I'm going to start off with about two, what did I say I was going to do? Uh, let's see here. This says four, but I'm doing a half a batch. So I'm going to start off with two tablespoons for now and make a bunch of noise. Put this back in the crock pot thing. And melt it down okay as soon as that melts down I'll bring you back and show you the next step all right okay now that that beeswax has melted it's probably only half of what I'm gonna want but I want to test it out um, and what I'm gonna do is put a little bit in a spoon and let it chill or cool <laughs> and um, see if it solidifies to the consistency that I want so I'm literally just gonna take a tiny bit out and I'm actually gonna put this in the refrigerator because I want it to hurry up okay Okay, so I did the first spoon test and it was, I want this to be a softer salve, like I said, but um, it was a little too smushy for me. So I went ahead and added one more tablespoon of the beeswax. Um, and just remember that if you, if you get done with yours and even after it's done in the jars and everything, if you decide, oh, that's too smushy or it's too hard, you can take it out of here, put it back in your crock pot and adjust accordingly. If it was too hard, add a little more, more olive oil. If it's too... Um, smushy, add another tablespoon or two of, of beeswax. So I'm gonna bring this up to you and show you um, 
a, basically the consistency that you're going to want to go for and it can be a little harder or a little softer than this okay hang on one sec okay so once you get it set on the spoon meaning set up firm if you can see here it's uh it's solid but it, in my case again i want it to be a softer sow so it it does crunch through i sort of broke the surface so that's kind of what you're going for you definitely want it to be something that when you push on it it breaks through okay Okay, now that I have the consistency that I want, I'm ready. So I took these jars and cleaned them just like I would if I was canning. Um, I didn't sterilize them per se, but I washed them in the dishwasher. And um, just add your, your liquid that will be salve here pretty soon. I don't know how many I'm gonna get, maybe just two, three, I don't know. Um, and the, at the end here, I'm going to add tea tree oil. I want tea tree oil in mine. You don't have to add that, but it's just another, um, it was Candace's suggestion, by the way. Um, just another sort of antiseptic element to the to the mix. And of course, tea tree oil is so good for you. So, but you don't want to add the tea tree oil until this is almost completely. Well, you want it to be cool. You don't want it to be hot at all. But to where it's almost set, you still want to be able to stir it in with a. Well, I'll just show you. I have this one here with a uh, like a popsicle stick. This is what I've been using for this little extra batch that I had. Um, but you do want it to be cool because the heat can kill the microbial elements to the tea tree oil, okay? So once this cools, we'll do that and jar them up and we'll be done. Okay, so these have cooled down and they firmed up a bit. Um, this is definitely going to be a softer sound, but I'm excited about it. So what I'm going to do now is, where did it go? Here it is. I'm going to go ahead and put my tea tree oil in now. Again, you do not need to add this. This is not critical. Um, this is just for a little extra love. So, oh, it doesn't have a dropper. I'm only gonna put one drop in each one. But it's kind of like four, but okay. <laughs> and stir it in. The other thing I was gonna tell you is if you get, if you're like me and you go cottonwood bud crazy and you're like, ah, I don't need this much salve all at once. <laughs> um, guess what everybody's getting for Christmas, by the way. Um, what you can also do is after step five, and step five is listed, this information is posted below. After step five, which is after you have, um, you've, you've heat infused them as much as you want to, um, don't strain out the buds or any of that step, okay? So right after step five, from the crock pot, take that mixture of oil and buds together and put them in quart jars and just try and make even amounts of the buds and, and if you have to do multiple jars put them in quart jars and just store them you know maybe down in your basement someplace cool and dark and um, and you can actually add the vitamin e oil then as well but not tea tree oil or anything like that um, but and definitely not beeswax don't add beeswax but what you're doing is you're just letting it you kind of gave it a head start on infusing um, and then you can let that jar sit in a cool dry place for like a year that's it. Put your little lids on. I made a mess on that one, so I'm not going to close it up yet. And there you go. It's beautiful. It just, it's the most amazing color. This is the uh, olive oil one, and this is the coconut oil one. They're, they're pretty similar. They're both that lovely green color. And then the last thing is I wanted to, this is a huge, huge thank you to Candace, Linda, and Renee, because um, I would not have gotten through this <laughs> over the weekend had it not been for them. First of all, I wouldn't even have gone and collected the cottonwood buds, buds if it hadn't been for Renee. Um, and so another shout out goes to humans of Loveland because they were the ones a couple of weeks ago that posted this picture and a little story of these folks that were out somewhere near the river, probably here, picking cottonwood buds. And they asked them what they were doing and they, they explained this, this balm of Gilead. I thought it was interesting. I shared it on my wall. And then Renee jumped on it, and then and we all end up going down there. Renee actually did get to go down there with us, but uh, Candace did, and Linda, and Linda's daughter. And uh, we foraged together, so it was really fun. But they helped me tremendously while I was making this also. And um, so thank you guys so much. Also, make sure you check out Candace Brown's Facebook page. It's Brown Bears Country Store, and I will post a link for it in the comments below. So get out there and forage for your, your cotton buds cottonwood buds and make sure you do it before they open up. I don't think I said that, but you don't want these to be opened up and the actual blooms coming out or you can't do it. So anyway, 
Happy foraging, happy salve making, and I will talk to you later. Bye.